Howdy guys, Cub here. Welcome to Snapshot 17W47A. And this week, guys, there are a lot of really, really awesome changes, which we're going to get into right now. But first, since this is a snapshot, I highly recommend that you back up your worlds that you run this snapshot on, especially with this snapshot, because they've begun to remove the block ID as well as the block ID limits from the game. And so the world format has actually changed in this edition. And so you need to definitely back up your worlds. In fact, speaking of backing up worlds, if I go ahead and go into a world here, let's just go into this world because I don't mind if it uh, has been altered. You can see there is now an option to back up your worlds as this world was last played in, in my case, 17W46A, and we're on the latest snapshot. Please make a backup in case you experience world corruptions. And so you can actually back it up, and this actually creates a new folder in your .minecraft folder uh, called slash backups and that will basically put in your world in a zip file and back it up for you. Uh, but luckily, I know what I'm doing. Hopefully. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and load on into the world, but that is a really cool feature added to this snapshot. And we're going to take a look at some of the other features added today. The first change this week is to pumpkins. Pumpkins will now no longer generate with the carved face in them. Instead, you can simply break the pumpkin like this and get the full pumpkin block. You see it's Minecraft pumpkin. But if you want the version with the face back, all you gotta do is right click with some shears and you can see it carves the face into your pumpkin, whichever face is facing you. And then if you go ahead and break these, let me just go ahead and break one of these, you can see it's now carved pumpkin. So they separated pumpkins from carved pumpkins and that is really, really cool. Also, I just want to note that to make an iron golem, you can no longer use the regular pumpkins that generate naturally in the world. You have to, of course, use the sheared version of the pumpkin with the face to make yourself an iron golem. We also have a bunch of new blocks this week, including new pressure plate variants, button variants, and trapdoor variants, as you can see here. This is the spruce variant of the trapdoor button and pressure plate. This is the birch, the jungle wood, the dark oak wood, and the acacia wood variants of all those and you'd craft these as you'd expect so if you wanted a pressure plate like a dark oak pressure plate just put it in like that let's say we wanted a birch button just put birch in the inventory like that get your birch button however it doesn't appear like the trap doors have been added yet but i presume they will be coming in a future update so yeah that is awesome we have new variants of trap doors buttons and pressure plates one other minor but awesome change is that you can now place buttons in different orientations on the floor and on the ceiling. So this is what is meant by different orientations. So one is facing east-west, one is going north-south, and then the same with the ceiling. One minor change this week is that both anvils and hoppers have had their bounding boxes changed to fit their models. So you can see here if I walk up to the anvil, take a look at how this bit of the anvil right here sticks out just slightly more than the top portion and watch what happens when I walk toward it. Did you see it? I went up a little bit and if I take a look at my Y value here I'm actually up a quarter of a block. I'm at 71.25 so I actually walk up this quarter of a block right here when pressing up against the anvil. And it doesn't happen of course when you go this way because this side does not stick out. So that's a nice little detail and feature. And with the hoppers now, the hopper bounding box is now more accurate and is fitting with the model, which means that if you have a situation like this, previously the hopper took up the entirety of the block, but now we can actually access things underneath of the hopper, which is super useful and definitely a much needed change. There are also some big changes to mushroom blocks, which I am extremely happy about living on a mushroom island on my survival hermitcraft series. And the changes are, you can now silk touch the stem blocks of the mushroom. So you can see here we have mushroom stem blocks, and we can of course place this down here, which is fantastic. And there are also some changes to the actual mushroom blocks themselves. Check this out, guys. Pick block now works properly on the mushroom blocks. Yes! Finally! Man, this has been so annoying in Season 5. I cannot tell you how happy I am. To see this change, it also works on the mushroom, the brown mushroom blocks. You can see we can uh, get the, the stem block right here. It's the same as the red mushroom stem. And then, of course, we can also use pick block on the brown mushrooms. And there's also another really cool feature of this, which I want to share with you now. So check this out, guys. So a lot of players, including myself, remember when you still touched these mushroom blocks, you got 
not the out, outer red or brown texture, but also the inside pore texture. And apparently that has been brought back. So let me just gather a few more blocks here and show you guys what I mean. Whenever you now place down mushroom blocks next to one another, like this in the world, the sides in between where you place those blocks lose their original mushroom texture completely. So what I mean by that is it's the poor block. The poor block is now generated here, and this stays in this state forever now, essentially. So if I go ahead and do this, like this, and let's just make a little wall here of the poor block, and then the only thing we have to do now is just get rid of these blocks. There we go, we got ourselves a porous wall right there. And the same thing works with the brown mushroom, obviously, so let's just quickly make a wall of brown mushroom here. Uh, let's just do something like this, and then just get rid of these blocks. And there we go, we have the porous mushroom block available to get in survival now. Fan-freaking-tastic. There's also a huge change to beds this week. The change is, is that you can no longer place beds freestanding. And if you break any of the supporting blocks underneath of where your bed is standing, it'll pop off as an item. Doesn't matter which block you place, it will pop off as an item. And you can also no longer place beds over holes. So you see I have this one block hole here. Can't place it there. Have to have two blocks supporting it. And if you destroy either one of the supporting blocks, it'll pop off as an item. Alright guys, the next feature to chests is absolutely amazing, and a lot of people have been wanting this for a long time. You can now place chests of the same type directly next to one another, and this was never possible before in the game. So previously you had to, you know, alternate between regular chest and trap chest, but now we have all chests of a similar type, and there's no issues here at all. But not only this, we can now also, if we didn't want, say, a double chest here, or here, or here, we could put all these down as single chests. So I could put like single chests like this, I could put a double chest here, single chest here, single chest here, single chest here, single chest here. And these are all the same chest types, just the regular chest type. The way you do this is you just place down a chest, then shift click a chest onto the block next to it, and it won't connect. So you can see here, if you don't shift, then it connects normally. If you do, then it's, yeah, single chest everywhere. So that is absolutely amazing. Single chests right next to each other. And yeah, very, very cool feature with chests right there. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to ask you to make sure you're sitting down for this next change because it's going to blow your socks off. We can now place jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins as well as fence gates freestanding without a block beneath it. Many of you will probably remember that we used to be able to only place them with a block underneath like this. That limitation has now been removed. I cannot tell you how many times this has frustrated me, and I am super, super happy that this is now in the game. So you can now place these freestanding, no block underneath, never again, never again. There are also some new blocks in creative mode this week. Those are the bark blocks. As you can see here, we have all the different varieties of bark blocks, and essentially, what these are are log blocks with the log texture on every side. So you can see every side is covered with the log texture. And again, those are only available in creative right now. Same for the double slab blocks. So we have smooth sandstone block. We have a smooth stone block, smooth quartz block, and smooth red sandstone block. Again, all those available in creative only. A couple of other new blocks. We have petrified oak slab block right there. This is a oak slab block that does not burn when exposed to fire, similar to the slabs that I showed in my Let's Play, which I obtained prior to Minecraft 1.1, which is the only time you could obtain these legitimately in survival. And we also have a name change for the chiseled sandstones. So this is now cut sandstone and cut red sandstone. So these are still obtainable in survival, but the name has changed from chiseled to cut sandstone. It's also worth noting that now in the creative inventory, you can now find farmland as well as the grass path. Creative Mode users also have a new tool this week. If we take a look here, I have a debug stick in my hand, which you can obtain by typing in this command into the chat. And there you go, get your debug stick. This thing can change, or actually more accurately, cycle between block states. So for instance, if I take a look at this grass block, I can change it to snowy, and we're back to grass. And so if we hit the F3 menu, you can see on the right-hand side, it says snowy false. I can switch that to snowy true and change it back to snowy false. Same thing if I had like a stair, for instance. 
I can change the stare. If we look at the right side of the screen, you can see it says facing south. And so I can change that to west or north or east and then back to south. So this allows you to cycle through the various block states. And so that is pretty interesting, I think. And of course, you can make some crazy shapes with this if you want to, um, just like this. One small but useful feature is the ability to toggle command suggestions from automatic to manual. You'll see if I go ahead and type in game mode and then hit spacebar, you see that the menu for the different game modes automatically comes up. But if you wanted to toggle it so that didn't happen, you now have the option to in your chat settings. You turn command suggestions off and it will no longer suggest them automatically. And so I can just demonstrate that here. See it no longer came up, but you can still hit tab to pull it up. So this is just a great option to have for the people who use commands quite often. There's also been a minor name change to the Monster Egg Stone Bricks and Chiseled Stone Bricks and all the other variants. They are now called Infested Crack Stone Bricks, Infested Chiseled Stone Bricks, etc. There's also a great bug fix this week on a bug I've showed previously on this channel, and that is that trapdoors will no longer stay open when they or their power source is moved. So previously, the trapdoor would stay open in this state, but as you can see here, it now closes. One interesting quirk this update, which may or may not be intended, but is certainly useful, is that sponges, when placed down, will now no longer update the water blocks that they have taken out. So you can see here, we have some floating water blocks, which is no longer possible in the game because of changes to uh, the ice, the way the ice updates. I'm guessing this is probably a bug, like they probably didn't intend this, but it's still pretty useful nonetheless, because you can create really cool stuff like this with just one single sponge. And it does start to update if you, like say I put a block here for instance, then it will start to update. So I'm guessing it's a bug, but still, I think it's pretty useful. Finally guys, I just want to mention that in this snapshot, there were a ton of bug fixes, which you can see in the change log below. Also, behind the scenes in this snapshot, there were enormous changes. Like massive, massive changes. The world formats changed. They basically split up and renamed every single block in the game. They have totally gotten rid of the block data and item data that used to be in the game. So that is now gone. They've changed how the chunks load. What does this mean for you? It means that awesome stuff is now possible in the future. That's what it means. So I am super excited. Hopefully you guys are too. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. As always, thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.